Lyric Opera Virginia's Jewel Box presentation of the classic opera Carmen brings out an intensity that feels ripped from the newspaper's blaring headlines. You've seen them. Woman murdered by ex-husband or ex-boyfriend or separated spouse. The actual status of the relationship doesn't matter. She has moved on out of fear or fickleness to a new life. He's still stuck. Obsessed with her, but it's all her fault. He ardently proclaims that it's love, but no, it's about control. Ownership, if you will, so she must die. Trimming Carmen to a brisk 90 minutes loses some of the Spanish local color and grandeur, but allows the audience a more intimate view of the character's fatal flaws. Mezzo-soprano Magdalena War was brilliant from beginning to end. Her rich, dark voice ran the complete emotional and vocal gamut from soaring beauty to grating ferocity. Not even trumpets could muffle its clarity. Neither her singing nor her acting held anything back. She presented an ambitious Carmen, who, like the much later Evita, was on her way up the social ladder, using her wiles to attract suitable men and bring them to their knees. Don José was not the first, and she gave him fair warning that he wouldn't be the last. Jonathan Burton was Don José, the junior police officer obsessed with Carmen, unmoored from the external structures that had held him together, abandoning his village sweetheart, disobeying orders, forsaking his duty to follow Carmen into the hills with the gypsy smugglers. He became unhinged, in a world he wasn't prepared for and couldn't belong to. Burton's nicely developed tenor was just fine for Don Jose, but he tended to overdo the throbbing just a tad. The great five-note scale of Carmen Jotema did not benefit from being so overwrought. To the role of Micaela, the pure, sweet village girl who tries to bring Don Jose to his senses, Suzanne Vinnick brought a powerful soprano voice. And there's the rub. In her aria, I can say that nothing scares me, a peculiar translation to boot, Vinnick tended to screech on top notes. Pure, sweet Micaela, who's supposed to be Carmen's antithesis, came off as petulant. Christopher Job was an imposing and confident Escamillo, the glamorous bullfighter Carmen chooses for her next lover. His voice was a shade light, but his bearing was superb, and he moved well, especially when whipping a red tablecloth off a table to demonstrate cape technique. Baritone John Marcus Bendel was believable as Zuniga, Don Jose's officer. Stage director Lillian Groag kept the action moving briskly, especially the sexual byplay of the cigarette girls with the policemen. But her very exceptional gift could become a distraction, as when the interaction between the guards and a boy took the focus off the heat developing between Carmen and Don Jose. The boy, well played by Alex Appoint, served his non-singing purpose with vigor. But any Spanish boy that age would definitely know you don't flap even in a pretend cape in front of your body. Escamillo made the same mistake. It's always held off to one side, or you are a dead Toreador. Kyle Lang's choreography was effective, as was Alan Green's lighting design. Gary Prianti's sparse sets gave the cast lots of room to move around in. Two large, curved, movable partial walls suggested a courtyard, the Smuggler's Mountain hideout, and finally the walls of the bull ring that turned their backs on Carmen's fate. From the other side of the footlights, I'm M.D. Ridge.